Mark's gone to Southampton to scout for an equally spectacular, if a little less traditional venue for their wedding. His plan is to have the ceremony and reception on board a stunning cruise ship as it sails around the Med. It's a big, bold idea, and Kelly has fond memories of working on board similar ships. But for Mark, it's the 600-seat theatre that's the main attraction. We're expecting wow, it's huge, isn't it? It's gorgeous. It's great. Like stars. Our relationship has been, it's been a show for 10 years. So I want, I want everyone else to see that, because it's like it's camera action, isn't it? Dance floor, fantastic yeah. view outside. Yeah. Bar, very important. Mark's happy. Wow. Yeah. You get used to this, mate. Is it? Oh, yeah. Definitely. It's good life, isn't it? Definitely. Tell you what, that's exciting, man. Yeah, it's got me excited. It's just as nice as it anywhere else if it weren't on a ship. Yeah. Yeah. But the difference is that it's on a ship abroad. One idea I did have for a wedding venue was to do it on a cruise ship, because Kelly used to work on one many years ago when she was younger, and also I spent time working on one as well. So I thought it'd be quite big, quite grand, and cruise ships are quite sexy. So I thought I can get everything I want on a cruise ship, and it'd be like the love boat or something. But Mark's not stopping there. With a cruise ship for Kelly, he also wants to put his own theatrical stamp on their big day. It's going to be a really big show. The guests of the audience, we're the main players, and I'm going to put my stamp on it with the things that I really like, which is uh, music. I'm into George Michael and 80s music, so I've got the guests, hopefully, are going to be wearing um, all 80s costumes, fancy dress. The priest, I'm going to get him to wear a T-shirt with Chew's wife. It's going to be the biggest performance we've ever done. It seems like the perfect wedding for the self-confessed king and queen of cheese. However... I want traditional, I want classy, and I want Mark to show everybody else a different side to Kelly and Mark. Most people know us as the act, Mark and Kelly, jazz hands and being silly and larking about, and I don't want this to be a show. I want to be a princess for a day. I think every girl does. So, is Mark sacrificing romance for razzmatazz? There is a lot to lose and a lot at stake if it goes completely pear-shaped. I'm just hoping, after 10 years of being together, he knows me. Mark and his best men are convinced the cruise is the way to go. Now he just needs to book it. For 20, 25 guests, for, we're probably looking about four, six, three per person. So 11,575. That's the absolute best we can do because of the late date that we're at. Um, how you would have to book for the full cruise. All right, I'll have a look at it and then give you a call back if we can simplify things. Okay. All right, thank you very much. You. All right, bye bye. Mark's plans look like they've sunk before they've even left port. The whole budget. Yeah. Just, just to go on the ship. That, that excludes yeah. flights as well. Exactly, yeah, there's no flights. Yeah. I just can't do it. No. no way. There's no point. When you get married, you want people there to witness it, to see it. I love her too much to be stood there, look out, and there's two people. Yeah. I wasn't worried before. I wasn't that scared, but yeah, we are. after that, I'm yeah, bricking it, yeah. I need another brew. Back in Manchester, Mark hopes he has a rescue plan for his cruise ship wedding. There you go. <clears throat> Hello, speaking. Hi, Rose. Uh, it's Mark. The idea that I've got so far is that myself and the best men uh, would start the cruise at the beginning in Marseille. Um, yeah. Obviously, that gives us enough time to arrange everything and set the wedding. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible? to have everybody else, all the guests that we want there, um, to, to get aboard just for the one day, just to see the wedding itself. Yeah, absolutely. The, the ship is actually longest in port in um, Civita Vecchia, which is, which is Rome. Um, while the ship's in port, all the guests embark, you have the blessing and the ceremony on board, and then you, and they disembark. Can we talk about costs? Um, so, we'll be looking around and about the two round mark. Thank you. Get it. Oh. Get it. It's a bargain, but it comes at a cost. There are just six days before Mark and the boys have to be on board in Marseille. 
and then there'll be a further five days before Kelly and the guests join the cruise in Italy for the wedding itself. In one phone call, he's halved his planning time in the UK. And there are a million and one things to sort out. You need to be available on the 2nd, the 3rd and the 4th. You haven't got a passport. Are you just visiting our planet, you two? Really? <laughs> I keep ringing until I find out someone who can set the time off and they've got a passport. My concern is and then these I... fights are going to start disappearing. Yeah, 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 so shut up and let me get on with it. With dependable Dave's help, they've now booked flights, a photographer and accommodation, plus a van to take them and all their wedding props to France. East Midlands. Are they booked? Yes. Are they seriously? Put, yes. Plus, they've sorted a licensed venue back in Manchester to get the wedding properly registered. Total spend so far? £7,500. That's half the budget gone. But just when Mark thought it was all plain sailing, there's another bureaucratic wave to negotiate. What's the email saying now? A list of all guests embarking on the ship. I'll need full names, date of births, nationalities, passport numbers. Anyone whose name is not on the visitor list will not be able to board the ship without exception. Oh, no. We've got to send this email, otherwise there's, it's going to be chaos. Mark's got everyone's details except for one essential individual. I've got Kelly's mum's. You've not got Kelly's mum's? No. You're joking. How are you going to get that? No, you're I'm not. She, oh. No. You... The boys are going to need a cunning plan to get Lynn's passport particulars without giving the game away. In a desperate attempt to avert disaster, Mark has come up with a genius idea. Get Lynn round to look for her passport. Um, leave me on my own to go and look for it, because right. I've had an idea and... Praying it, yeah. I've been thinking of mithering. Lynn's upstairs, <coughs> hoping to find a passport. And if she finds it. I found it! I found it. Oh, I'm so relieved. I came in and I thought, right, if I think about it and really think about it, I remember filling a bag with stuff. Don't lose it. <laughs> With working together and living together, they've never really had to exist without one another. Um, I think Mark finds it quite difficult. To, well, they've never been away from one another. In less than 30 seconds, Lynn saved her daughter's wedding. Hello, everybody, where am I going? Ooh. Oh, I've been felt. Oh, no, I've just been doing that, Kelly. <laughs> In just a few minutes, Kelly will find out exactly what Mark's been planning. And as she weaves her way through the ship, Mark's got a little pre-service entertainment organised to get their guests into the party mood. While Kelly remains firmly anchored to what might have been. And now it's time for the groom to take to the stage. And Mark decides to open with an impression of 70s sitcom favourite Frank Spencer, a character renowned for creating chaos wherever he went. It's, ooh, here every day. Hello, I'm all right. I've got a stick, ooh, sorry. Oh, oh here, yes. Oh, is this the right place? Thankfully, the ship's director is on board to navigate the ceremony in a more sensible direction. to today has been tough for Kelly. She's been stood up and let down. And she may not have got her fairy tale wedding, but in a few minutes, she will be Mrs. Kelly Kelly.